Hi everyone, this is Dave and welcome to a new video on the Geekanoids channel. This is one of my most popular requested videos for this month. And in fact, I think about 20 to 25 of you have asked for this video. It's a what's on my Mac and I'm currently sitting in front of my Mac Pro. Yes, Pro users are being neglected by Apple and I'm still using my late 2013 Mac Pro and it's now late 2017. Come on Apple, give us a new Mac Pro. But without further ado, let's take a look at what I've got installed. Now I'm only gonna concentrate on the applications that are installed on my dock. Most of these I use regularly, some I don't use regularly and I'll point those out as we go through. So we've got the finder icon on the left hand side of the dock. We've also got Siri, which I don't use on my Mac Pro. I do use it on my MacBook Pro, but never ever use it on the desktop here. We've also got Launchpad, which again, I hardly ever use. We've got the App Store, which I use just for installing applications and performing updates. Safari, believe it or not, shock horror, is my second browser. My primary browser is Google Chrome. I'm not gonna actually launch this, purely because it's got private information on it at the moment, but Google Chrome is my default browser on the Mac Pro. Then we've got Apple's mail application. This is what I use for all of my emails. I have tried other email clients, and of the ones I like are Airmail and also Spark. I really do like Spark. In fact, I use that for almost a month, but I always find myself coming back to mail. It just seems to integrate a lot better with the OS. And then we've got TweetDeck. This is my Twitter client of choice. I use this for all of my Twitter communications, direct messages. I use it for scheduling some tweets. Uh, the remainder of my tweets, I actually use the Buffer app for scheduling tweets. But normally I do my replies uh, on two or three occasions throughout the day. And I just really love this application, TweetDeck. I've used it for so, so long now, and it really is superb. And as you can see, I've got this actually starting up on the left hand side of this ultra wide LG display. This is a 38 inch display I work on on my main setup. And I always have sort of one application come up on the left, one come up on the right, it saves me having two monitors. It works extremely well for me. And uh, the only time I have a full screen application is when it's a production application. You'll see that in a short while as well. Then moving along, we've got Wonderlist. I don't use this that often now, I've switched across to using Things as my Get Things Done app. Uh, Wonderlist I used to use a lot as a to, just like a to-do list, but I've switched across to Things. I'm gonna be doing a separate video to show you what's on my iPad, and I'll show you Things in a little bit more detail then. We've also got Skype, which I use on occasion, but primarily on my MacBook Pro. The Contacts app just here. Then we've got Calendar. We've got the Notes app. We've got Photos. And then we've got Pages. I use this quite often as well. Instead of using Microsoft Word, I use Apple's Pages, and it gives you all of these templates you can actually choose from, and you can even put your own templates in as well. So here I've got sort of like a blank invoice and a personal letterhead, and it just works extremely well. I really do like this application. And then moving along, we've also got Numbers. I used to use Numbers for my accounting. It's a spreadsheet application, the equivalent of Microsoft Excel. But I've moved across to using an online uh, accounting application now rather than Numbers. But it still is a very good application. Then we've got iTunes and shock horror again here where I admitted to Google Chrome to be in my default browser. iTunes, I know a lot of you use it, a lot of you love it, a lot of you hate it. I don't even open the iTunes application unless I'm forced to. Everything I do is actually on my iPad or on my iPhone. I hardly ever synchronize with iTunes. I used to a lot because uh, you used to use it to manage your applications, but now I hardly ever launch that. Next along, we've got Final Cut Pro. This is my video editor of choice. Let's load this up. And this is one of the applications that I have load up full screen and I just love it on this ultra wide monitor because it allows me to scroll across my timeline uh, and see a lot of my timeline without having to keep scrolling. So it's really, really good for video editing. And I have all of my projects up in this left hand panel so that I can open up sort of uh, templates and then edit very, very efficiently on this particular monitor. So let's close that down. Next one along is we've got Adobe Premiere. Hardly ever use it, but on occasion I might load this up. 
Then we've got Adobe Photoshop. Uh, I do subscribe to the Adobe Creative Suite and I use this for creating various graphics for the channel, graphics for my website, thumbnails, etc. And then we've got Adobe Bridge, admittedly, never ever use this. Then we've got P-Touch Editor. This is for doing labeling. I've got a brother uh, label printer and I use this for doing the labels. Then we've got Aurora HDR Pro. I dive into this on occasion when I want to edit a photo. Then we've got Adobe Speed Grade. We've also got Photoshop, Lightroom 5 and Illustrator. Of these three, I very occasionally load up Illustrator when I need to do a tweak to a logo for somebody, for example. I used to be a graphic designer, but nowadays I don't take on new clients. So I only service existing clients and on occasion I have to go into Illustrator to do some changes to a logo. Then we've got ScreenFlow, which is the application I'm actually using to capture the screen on my Mac Pro. I've used ScreenFlow for many, many years. It's super easy to use, very intuitive and highly recommended. And then we've got one password. Again, an application I can't really show you running because this contains all of my passwords. Rather than me have to remember passwords or set up passwords like David123, I use this to generate really strong passwords and it stores it in an encrypted vault and then I can access this across multiple devices. So again, a highly recommended application. Then we've got system preferences and then we've got control center for some of my apps and devices. And then last but not least, this is just a little stack here of uh, recent downloads and then the trash can. And then on my desktop in the top right hand corner here, we've got icons for my Mac Pro hard drive, my video work, video work clone, and also my backup hard drive as well. So there's plenty going on on my Mac Pro. If you want to see any of the applications in a little bit more detail, then please do drop me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please do hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in another one very soon.